Greetings today. We're going to generate a deep fake with Python. And in order to do this, we need three things. The first thing we're going to need is a source file. A source file contains the image, which will be animated. This image must have a face and it must be of the proper dimensions. The next thing that we're going to need is a driver video file. So the driver video file also contains the image of a face, but the face is saying something and it's just moving its lips. And then the third thing that we're going to need is a config file. For the sake of what I'm doing here, I kept the same config file that was in the repo. Speaking of repos, the way how this works is that I'm using a repo called Deep Animator, and this is actually a wrapper around another repo, which is called First Order Model. And the reason why I think the Deep Animator is something that is preferred is because there's less overhead when it comes to installing things. And then also just using the code is a little bit easier. But if you wanted to, you can also use a first order model repo. I'm going to have both of those as links in the description, and then you can go to those repos and read up on how this works. So now that we see the big picture, I want to describe the steps. The first step is to install dependencies. And then once that's done, we're then going to install the library that does the actual deep faking. And then once we have that, we're going to download the model weights. And then we're going to use a code here to generate the deep fake. As you guys see here, I have the syntax and I'll dive into this later on, but I want to show you the big picture. And then once we have the deep fake generated, we then want to do some post processing. <clears throat> Excuse me. The reason why the post processing is needed is because the output of the previous step, which is to generate the video, the video is too slow and it needs to be modified. So essentially these are the steps that we're going to be using to generate the output. And once we're done, we should be able to do this. Check this out. So this is on the left side, we have the driver video. This is a video of Trump. As you see, he's moving his lips. And then on the right side, we have a whole bunch of source pictures, source PNGs. And what's cool about this is that this driver video is actually able to control and manipulate the ellipse of the source. So I think it's pretty cool. It looks somewhat convincing as far as its realism. Of course, the head motion is a little bit jerky, but I think you guys could see the power of this method. And one thing too is that it's not that long. Using this process takes about four minutes to get your results. One of the cool things is that in the original images that you see here, there's no teeth, no inside of the mouth that's shown. But then when you look at the actual generated images or ge generated videos, I should say, you can actually see the teeth, you can see inside of the mouth, and that is coming from the model. So again, this model that we're downloading is quite large and it has all that extra information based on looking at other images. So now that you see what it can do, Let's get started and let's do it for what we have here. So going back to our Jupyter Notebook, we will install the dependencies. Now keep in mind all of these dependencies I've actually already installed. So the result that you see is going to say dependency satisfied. But when you're doing this, it's going to take a while. Installing all of these dependencies, actually I think for the first dependencies it may take about a minute or so. And then when it comes to installing the next batch, that one takes about five to 10 minutes. So let me kind of dive into what's happening here. And by the way, I want to say that I pre-typed all of this because I thought it would be faster instead of watching me type. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of discuss each of these steps. So the first batch of dependencies is really for deep animate. Here you need to have this lib free type. If you don't have it, then deep animate will not work. Then also you're going to need to have FF MPEG and then you're going to need fast script. One of the dependencies that I think was left out from that repo is fast script. So once you have all of these installed, you then want to install G down. You might be asking, why do we need G down? So G down is used to install the model weights and you can do that by just doing G down and then you have the link and then it will download it to your file system. Another way to install the model weights 
is to actually navigate to the Google document or Google Drive website and then download it. So either one. I just find GDown a little bit easier to use. So when you run those commands, you get output that looks like this. As you see here, it's complaining that I did not use sudo for my first two commands. When you're doing this in your file system, you can do sudo and then install, you know, the respective packages. And then for fast script and gdown, it's pretty much saying that I already have those dependencies already. And then moving on to the next step, we will install the deepfake video library. And that's simply pip install deep dash animator. And as I mentioned before, this is a wrapper around first order model. And what's cool about this is that this goes out there and then gets everything that you need to have this working. Once you do that, you should get output that looks like this. Oh, it looks like I don't have the output, but again, if I were to run this, it's pretty much going to say uh, dependencies met and uh, everything's satisfied. So that's what I have here. The next step is to download model weights. And then this is where having GDown is beneficial. You don't have to navigate to the Google Drive and your browser. You can simply run this command here. Let me expand this to show you. So the first thing I did here is I have um, GDown and then I have this particular uh, location. One of the questions that you might be asking is, where in the world am I getting this particular resource? So if you go to the Deep Animate GitHub, you'll see that it has a link to the model weights. So that's where I'm getting this from. And then what I'm doing in the next step is I'm simply renaming this from Deep Animator underscore model dot PTH dot tar into model weights dot tar. The reason why is because I wanted to rename the result of the download as something else. Now, having that said, it might be possible to use GDown to rename that file. But when I took a quick glance, it wasn't obvious to me. So I just did it with this old school bash technique. So once you've downloaded the model weights, the next step is to actually generate the deep fake. And that's exactly what we're going to do next. So coming here, we have the syntax. Let me expand and show you guys what I did. So simply put, you have deep animate and then you have the source and then you have the driver the mp3 config.yaml and model weights.tar so let me let me take a time out first i want to show you exactly where i'm getting my source.png and driver.mpeg or mp4 and then also config.yaml so these resources are coming from the repo the deep animate repo in my Jupyter Notebook, I actually have these installed here already. So let me show you what the source looks like. So if I were to click on the source, the source looks like this. The source is simply an image. This is a PNG. This is a PNG of some kind of Greek figure, or really not the figure, but the face. And that's all it is. It's just an image. And the driver, if I show you the driver, this is a video. The driver is a video of Leonardo DiCaprio. And when I play this, you're going to see him moving his lips. There's no sound. This particular deep fake, we're not concerned with the sound, only with the motion of the head, lips, and face. So as you see, he's moving his lips. He is saying something. So that's, that's it. So that's the driver. And then the next resource that we have here is the... Um, so... We have the model weights. Again, I showed you guys how to get the model weights. Um, we have config.yaml. So the config.yaml is actually coming from the uh, repo. Let me go to that. So this is a repo that wraps the uh, first order model. And I simply took the, uh, the default YAML here and I didn't tweak it at all. I suspect that if you tweak it, you might get better performance. Um, you know, maybe you can make it a little bit more fancy. So that is what I have here for my YAML. And this is what it looks like on my system. Cool. So now you guys know where I have those resources from. So again, you do deep animate your source, which is that image that I showed you, that Greek statue, the driver, which is Leonardo DiCaprio speaking, the config file, which is what I just showed you a minute ago and then the model weights that we downloaded. Now, I'm not gonna run this again because this does take a while. It takes about four to six minutes 
What I will do is I'm going to show you the output when I ran this in my system. So when I ran this, it simply just shows 100% because it's already done. That's what This is what you're going to see when you run it locally. And if you don't have the uh, dependencies installed correctly, which are these, it will complain and it won't work. So that's something you should keep in mind. Also too, when I did it the first time, I used Python 3.10 and it didn't work. So I suspect you have to use 3.6. Actually, no, sorry, I'm using 3.7. The reason why is because um, I looked at uh, the repo here. I saw that this repo is actually failing. This, this is actually, it's not new, it's three years old. And I think it's failing because the CI is using a Python version that's not 3.7. Anyhow, um, I was able to get it working by using um, installing these dependencies and then using Python 3.7. And once you do, you'll have this. Now, I am going to show you the output that I have when I ran this, and then you'll see that this is not adequate. Um, let me navigate to my file system and show you what I have. One moment. Alrighty, so here it is. This is my file system for this notebook, Deepfake, and the output video is this. You're going to notice something here. Oops, let me bring it down. So this is the output video. Let me start it over because I think it was too high. So this is the output video. You'll notice that this video is 44 seconds long and it appears to be moving in slow motion. By the way, pretty cool. As you see, that image is now animated, which is awesome. Right, that's really cool. The mouth is moving, but too slow. 44 seconds, but the original video of DiCaprio was 14 seconds long. So there's a problem here. So what I did is I actually did some post-processing using Python, and that's what this part is for. So it says uh, the generated video is slow. We need to speed it up so the length is the same as a driver video, and that's what this is for. So um, let me just kind of run through this code. And again, I didn't type it. I, I could type it in front of you, but I don't want to waste your time. I just have it here. I will explain how it works. So um, I'm, I'm importing sub process because I want to run code with sub process and I want to get access to that output. I also have OS here because I'm using OS system and I'll show you that further down. Here I have the name of the video. So the driver video is called driver.mp4. And then the generated video is called generated video.mp4. Very, you know, very uh, uninteresting video name, but uh, it does work. And then the output video is going to be called generated underscore video fast.mp4. And this first function here, get length, this will, this will give you the output duration of a video file. So what happens here, you pass the file name. So you can pass it driver.mp4, or you can pass it uh, generated video.mp4, and then it will give you the length. That's important because I want to get the length, right? And then the next batch of code, what it does is that it gets the length of the driver video, which is 14 seconds. And then it gets the length of the deep fake video, which we saw was 44 seconds and a lot slower. And then it creates a ratio. It says, okay, we're going to take the driver length video, which is, um, what, 14 seconds, and we'll take the deep fake video, which is 44 seconds. We're going to divide that. It's going to give us a ratio. So we're, we're going to get a float, and we're going to round this to four digits. When we have that, we will then, uh, this prints the, the values. I did that because I wanted to kind of debug and see what those are going to be. So see the driver length, the deep fake video length, and then the ratio of those. And then this is using a command. So this command is using ffmpeg, and it is taking the uh, the generated video, the one that's 44 seconds, and then it's scaling this down by multiplying this by that ratio. So the ratio that we'll get is going to be like 0.3 or something, or 0.29. So it's making the resulting video 0.29 of whatever it was. And then it's going to create the output video which we called um, generated video fast right here. It's going to create that output video with that name. 
and os.system is essentially going to run that command for us and then it's going to print oh it's done saved as that file so that's what that's doing and um, let's run that and see what we get so when we run that it says uh, processing deep fake video 14 seconds 14.8 seconds is the length of that driver video and then we have 44.4 seconds which is the resulting one that moves in slow motion and then the ratio that we're looking for is 0.33 and then it runs and then saves the video as generated video underscore fast dot mp4 and then this is just some uh some resulting information as you see i ran it already and it said hey i already have this in the file system should it overwrite and i think it doesn't overwrite because that's the default setting so let me show you what that result looks like so here we have the generated video which is the same as this one exactly the same but it's faster and matches the length of the <clears throat> the driver video Here it is. So as you guys see, this deep fake has the same length. And what's remarkable about this again is what, what amazes me, I, I'll say, is that it's able to find out what's in the mouth. I know that is not a big deal, but to me, that's impressive. And my understanding is that it's using information within all those models, which has a collection of images and probably information from videos and then discerning what the inside part of the mouth looks like what what is that unknown and also when it turns to the side it has to discern and guess based on its information what the unknown looks like and that's pretty cool i will say that there are some faults with this approach what i notice is that when the head is moving it's pulling the background it's like it's all one fabric so you'll see the the background being deformed and i think that's something that can be improved Maybe that's something that can be improved by using the comp big. Again, I didn't dabble with that. I used the default, but I suspect that is possible. Alrighty, so there you go. You guys now know how to make your own deep fakes, which is awesome. And again, you can do this with four simple steps. What we did is we essentially install these dependencies. Then we install the deep fake library, which is a wrapper around first order model. And then we downloaded the model weights, generated the deep fake, and then did some post-processing to speed it up. So that's it. And until next time, take care of yourself.